So I'm going to just highlight both of those, copy them, and then bring them over into Court Farms. Now the easiest way, we've already searched for materials or the end of the materials section. So the easiest way I find is to just do that same search again. So control up to bring up your search window from the top of the page. Click find next at the end of the materials line there or the tag. Just scroll down and it will bring you to your fruits which are here. Now that we are actually down here, what we need to do is look at our foliage multi-layer and the appropriate channels and make sure that they are in sync with what I've got in instructions here, which they are in this particular case. So that's great. One thing to note that the num channels may be different on various different maps. This map has only got the in-game standard fruit types, but if you've got a map that's got various different additional fruits on it already, this number here may be higher than 12. It may be set to 14, or maybe even higher than that. 14 is the highest I've ever seen, I think, but it may be different. But as long as this number here, the density map ID, and the num type index channel is the same, don't panic if this number is different. It may well, very well be. And that's fine. So what we'll do here is create our new line and paste in our fruit. So just bring those over a little bit. And bring that line up. Just so it looks fairly tidy. Uh, one more thing to note is the actual density map type index for the appropriate fruit. It, the fruit itself, the density map type index needs to be higher than the last fruit on the map. So in this particular case it's sugar beets um, and they were set at 8. So this one would need to be set at 9. If you then added oats that would be 10. Uh, soybean would be 11 and so on and so on. Um, another thing is your win row will always match what your fruit type is. So in this particular case 9, but your wheat for example is set to 1 and the wind row is all set to, set to 1 and your grass wind row is set to 2 to match your grass. While we're there we're just going to have a look across and see what the distance map ID is for a couple of these things so that I hopefully get it to match um, on my Lucerne wind row because I've got that set to 50 all I need to do is match it up to yes so grass win row is set to 50 right there so that's fine 50 on there and 50 on my lucent win row so both of those are okay I don't need to change anything there <clears throat> and just checking again um, like I said on your rape just make sure your rape block shape ID matches what you've got down for your fruit type that you're adding in which in this particular case it does um, and check your win row block shape ID. This is set to 7 and so is it for the win row that's in the game on this particular map. So that's fine. I don't need to make any further changes there either. Okay, so now that we've checked all of that out and <clears throat> everything seems to be in order, I'll go ahead and save again. I'll come back to my instructions. <clears throat> so the next thing I need to do now is open the map up in Giants Editor and actually have a look and see whether it works, whether I can actually paint down the correct foliage type and all of its appropriate growth stages. So I'm now going to close down <coughs> the map on 3D. The reason I do that is because when I save and exit out of Giant Senator, it will obviously change and adapt the map on 3D to um, fit in with all the other bits and pieces and if I've already got it open in Notepad++, it then causes not issues as such, but you will need to then possibly either close it down or update what you've already got there. So by closing it down now, I'm just skipping some steps and, and uh, possibly avoiding a bit of a, um, a mess up later on. So I'm going to open up my Mapoi 3D here in <coughs> Giant Senator, excuse me. Again, this is, you know, sometimes quick, sometimes not. Depends what's already on the map. Uh, luckily, this was quite quick, so that's fine. Okay, so I'm just going to find a bit of a, a space here that I can paint down some stuff. But first, I want to just show you the scripting window here. This is where any errors will be shown up 
Um, so if you've put something in the wrong place or the path file name is not quite right or whatever else, this would show you where your errors are. And if the window is not already open, you can open it by going up to your taskbar at the top here, go Window, and go to Scripting. Not Script Editor, but Scripting. And that will bring up this window here, and it will show you any appropriate edit er errors um, that will need to be addressed before you put it into game. Luckily for me, I've got no errors, so that's perfect. OK, so I'm going to select my Terrain Foliage Paint Mode here. And then I'm going to scroll down to my Foliage Layer Painting. And you can see already that the foliage layer that's been selected is Lucent. So I've done something right there because it's already given me what I require. And I've also got my Winrow as well, so brilliant. So with <coughs> Lucent or Alfalfa selected here, I'm now going to just put it some bits and pieces down on the map. And I'm going to just lower my brush down a bit. There we go. So I'm just going to have a look around on um, my foliage channels here. And just make sure that everything paints down on the screen correctly. Now the first growth stage is Foliage Channel 4. And you won't see anything because that is just, you know, the first stage um, after seeding. So nothing will show up on screen there. And I can click on there and nothing comes up. So the next one is <coughs> Foliage Channel 5. And as you can see, we've got our first growth stage or our second growth stage. But the first growth stage we can actually physically see like so. So the next one after that is 4 and 5. And if I do that over there, we can just work around and compare all of the different growth stages. So as you can see, growth stage 3, but the second growth stage that we can actually physically see on, on the map. So then after that one, we've got 6 on our foliage channel here, like so. And then the next one we've got after that is 4 and 6, like so. And then the next one after that is 5 and 6. And then 4, 5 and 6. So as you can see there, some of them look very similar. Um, but in game, you will have your different final stages. So this stage here will be ready to cut I would imagine um, but it'll be the first cutting stage then you've got your second cutting stage and your third cutting stage and then we move on to foliage channel 7 which is withered like so okay then what we have after that is 4 and 7 which is cut short So that is all of our different growth stages and their appropriate foliage channels. And we can see that all of those work as intended. So that is absolutely perfect. Last but not least, though, we need to actually check that we have a good windrow texture come up. Because the last thing I want to do is mow the grass and then find that I can't actually do anything with it. Because I don't get what I need to pick up. So for this, I don't need to change to the Winrow because it's all part of the foliage channels that I'm changing that give me what I need on screen in the appropriate actual um, fruit type itself. So what I need to do there is go into foliage channel 8 and that will then give me my Winrow, like so. Okay, I'm hoping that that all makes sense and so far that you've uh, been able to follow along and not abandon ship but um may take a couple of attempts maybe slightly different for each different fruit type you may find that in your actual um textures here you may have more or less depending on the growth stages and the distances and everything else it will depend on what map you've got your information from but it's all about joining everything together and the correct uh, path file names and all the other bits and pieces. Um, hopefully the instructions that I've shown on screen here um, and, uh, and as I've gone through them, you've been able to follow along um, and work with them. Just pause the screen at different places um, and uh, 
yeah, hopefully that's it's been enough for you to follow along and get something from it. Um, what I will do now is I'm going to uh, off screen. I'm going to put this into a field. Uh, actually, put a field ready to to cut with with uh, lucerne or alfalfa, um, and I will complete the next stages of this, and then eventually we'll get in game, and I'll show you what we can do with this particular fruit. Uh, but it obviously, again, will differ depending on what fruit type you're adding in. Uh, this one is not harvested for a grain. It's more to do with the actual um, benefits from using this fruit type, in my opinion. But I will get into that as we go further forward. So for now, what I'm going to do is close down this giant editor session without edit, without without saving it, because I need to make a few more adaptive changes um, before I get to that point. Um, and then I will do a few bits off screen, because you don't really want to watch me do that, because it will take a while. And then we'll get into game um, later on and have a play around with some different machinery. Um, and cut it and chaff it and whatever else. But like I said, we'll get to that shortly. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and close this down without saving at the moment. And we'll go to the next stage in our instructions. So the next part is to change a couple of lines of text here in our sample mod map. Uh, this may not necessarily be called that in the, the actual Lua. It may be called the map name, um, but for the most part, as far as I know, it will always be with the mod desk. So wherever the mod desk is located, you'll find this Lua file, but it may not necessarily be called sample mod map. It might be called, called if you know this map is court farms, so theoretically that could, could be called court farms dot Lua. But um, if we go into the folder, I'll show you what I mean. So as you can see here, this particular version is called Sample Mod Map Lua, but that may not necessarily be that. It might be called um, the actual farm name or map name. Um, but it's, again, from my experience, always in the same place as the mod desk is, so you won't be able to miss it. So we'll open up this in Notepad++, and the lines of text we're going to be adding in are these here. But what you need to do first of all, before you just jump in and add them in, is make sure that they're not already there because I've found in some cases map editors or creators or whatever else um, will go down the path of adding in additional fruits and for whatever reason um, remove them. It may be the fact that they've released a map with, with additional fruits and for whatever reason it's, called ex it's caused extensive lag and um, somebody's not happy with it. For whatever reason I, I, I don't know but They've then released a newer version without the actual additional fruits, but they've left all the scripting and everything behind. Um, and that's what's happened here. Because as you can see, all of that text is already there. So I don't need to add it again. For whatever reason, this started off as a multi-fruit map, perhaps in version 1. And like I said, this is version 1.02 or 102, whatever you say that. Um, so the original version may have had additional fruits. And they were removed. I can't say for sure because I never played the original version. This is the only version I have and the only version I've played on. So I don't know on that, that score. But this has already got that line of text in it. So I don't need to add it again. So I can just close that or make any further changes. But if it wasn't there, then you would need to add it. And it explains here how and where you need to put that in. Okay, so now that I've done that, what I need to do next is go down to um, my mod desk or an open my mod desk and add in a few lines of text there okay so now what I'm going to do is open up my mod desk like so <clears throat> and then I need to add in a few things here to make it all work so first of all I need to add in this lines of these lines of text here which will point the um, game in the right direction, the correct file path for my additional fruit type script. So I'm going to copy that and put it over into the mod desk. Um, but I don't need all of it obviously because there are some scripts on here already. 
So what I need to do is just copy this line of text just there like so. And I can then add that in. There we go. So now that I've got that into there, what I need to do then is add in my script itself. And obviously I've put it in a particular place and I've said I'm going to put it in that folder um, or in that path file name. So if I close that down like so, I'm going to basically put my script directly into there like that. It's not going to go in the scripts folder, it's just literally going to go there like that. So next thing I need to do is uh, copy over the next part of it, which is the actual fruit itself. Because this particular map has got no additional fruits on it whatsoever, I will need all lines of text. If you already had the additional fruit type script installed and you were running additional fruit types, you would only need to add this line in the middle here. But because I'm adding additional fruits on this map, um, because it hasn't got any at all at the moment, I will need all of it. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that and bring it over and put it onto the map. And I will just put it at the top here like so. Okay, so now that we've got that into there, I'm just going to go through this part here. Now, the the actual fruit huds um, will be in this folder, and that's the folder it will look in to get the fruit huds. So I will need to basically copy that, go to my huds folder here, and then rename that to fruit huds, and then bring that over into this folder. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it in like so. And that shows me my fruit huds. What you will see, like so, in your um, oh good lord, what's it called? The HUD, the thing in the bottom right hand corner. Yeah, that thing. Words. I'm struggling today. I must admit. Anyway, you'll get what I mean when we when I show you in game later. Um, so next part, I want to just go through here is the actual fruit itself. Um, now I've changed this somewhat because again like I said um, the map that I actually or the maps I've played on with the, this particular fruit type even the one that had the textures for the winrow it was not activated. It You couldn't get a winrow in game um, um, and the reason that is because in this line of text it tells the game exactly what you're going to do with that fruit type. So if I scroll across here you will actually see that it says has winrow. This was actually set to false. Oops. This was actually set to false. Um, so yeah, that that needed to be changed to true. The other information was there, but for, again, for whatever reason, somebody had deactivated it. They didn't want it on that particular map, so it was just set to false. So I've just literally changed that to true, and then I get my winrow. Um, So that's that. Okay, so now that we've got all that into there, I'm going to go ahead and save it again. And then the next thing I need to do is add in the, the lines of text here, which will allow the game to work out what I require it to be called, designated in the game itself. Even though the fruit type is Lucerne, I want it to display in game as Alpha Alpha, and that's where these lines of text come in. So I'm just going to grab those two lines there. And it needs to be within the 110N section. So if you go into your mod desk, you've got a 110N tag there. And you've got another one down here. As long as the text is anywhere in between the two of them, it will work. So what I'm going to do is just come into here, create a couple of lines, and paste it in under there, like so. And then just tidy it up a little bit. And I'm going to then save again. So now that I've done that, we're pretty much there basically. I've I've um, copied over my additional fruit type script. I've copied the fruit huds. Um, I've added in all the lines of text. Uh, we didn't need to bother changing the sample mod map lure because it had already been done by the map creator. I've added in my actual fruit types themselves, the foliage sublayers, and hopefully I've explained all the bits and pieces about that correctly. Um, or to, to at least a point you can understand. Um, and we've adapted the acre fine diffuse 
channels uh, for the distance map IDs. We've added in the material types, we've added in our actual texture path file names and their file IDs, or at least their temporary file IDs. And we've sorted out all of our shaders. So we're pretty much done there. I think um, no more is required there. I've also hopefully explained about the multi fruit modules um, and finding one that is appropriate for the fruit type that you're adding in um, and how to edit the one that you've got to work with the fruit type that you're adding in if you so choose to go that way. So I'm going to close that down now and I'll minimize this. <clears throat> what I'm going to do now is open up my Giants Editor session again like so and we'll just recheck for any errors in our scripting window which there shouldn't be any like so and no errors so that's good I'm not going to actually paint down any textures or anything like that I'm not even going to really move the camera or anything the, 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 uh, where I'm on the, on the map all I'm going to do is just save it and I would highly recommend that you do this before you put it in game and I'll show you why when we go back into the map eye 3D in text editor um, because you'll see the changes that the Giants engine has made to the file IDs and all the bits and pieces and adapted it to work with that particular um, XML. So I've now closed that down and I'm going to then right click on my map eye 3D and open it in um, Notepad++ and you can see that we had our textures, the files were at the top here and now they've completely disappeared, they've moved. So what I will do now is just click in the top of the page here and I will do a search for Lucen and it will bring me down to my texture file paths and you can see that all of the file IDs, the numbers that we had set before have completely changed, it's adapted the Giants engine has adapted the XML and changed the numbers appropriately and if we then continue on down we can see that our material ID, <clears throat> the custom shader, has actually changed and adapted. The path file ID has changed to search for our um, the appropriate um, texture displayed um, to match it, I mean. And all the rest of the bits and pieces have changed. The material IDs here have changed, obviously, because that was 9999 and this was 8888. So all of that has changed as well. Um, um, and as you can see, if we continue on down, we'll get down to here. The material IDs here have also adapted and changed. If we come across, our block shape ID is now changed as well. And it matches what we've got down for rape in-game. So even the rape has changed and adapted because this was set differently before. So everything has changed and adapted to make it all work within game. I just wanted to show that quickly so you can possibly get a better understanding of what's in, you know, what's all included and um, how the game works and, uh, and, and adapts to the additional fruit types, the changes that we're making. Um, so yeah, so that's it. We're all done there, so I can now close that down so I don't need to have that open anymore. Um, and then what I will do is I'm going to um, zip it all up. I'll put it in game, and uh, once we're in game, I'll let you have a look and see what it all looks like. Uh, what I will do is um, I'll go back into Giant Senator off screen and I'll paint the uh, loosen foliage into a field, a particular field that they own or will own um, and then I'll buy all the appropriate equipment and we'll do a bit of uh, mowing and a bit of chaffing and some other stuff and just to show you what, what you can actually do uh, once you've got the fruit type in there and I'm specifically talking about this fruit type but any fruit type that you choose to add in um, you know you, you can uh, once you've got it in there just go into a game add some money if you know how to do that, there's plenty of money cheats out there. Add some money, buy some appropriate uh, machinery, and make sure that it all works first. You know what I mean? Don't play on the map for 20 hours and then decide to plant oats and find that none of it works properly. 
um, I'd have to start again, start the game save, or delete that game save and start all over again because of some stupid error that was overlooked or whatever else. Make sure it all works before you really get into the game uh, or into that particular game save on that map that you've edited. Um, so I will do that and um, come back and I'll see you shortly.